back to Sprague Homestead. Today we're going to talk a little bit about rabbit molt and what you can do to help a rabbit that's having a particularly hard molt get through it. So if you've raised rabbits for any length of time then you probably know that rabbits go through a molt twice a year, usually in the spring and then in the fall. The exact timing of these molts is going to vary a bit depending on where your or what your climate is and where you live. For us here, usually my first molt is going to happen somewhere around April-ish. Um, this is when the temperatures start to get warm enough that the rabbits know that spring and warm weather are coming. And they're going to go and transition from their winter coat into a summer coat. The second time this is going to happen uh, here is going to happen around August, September. The low temperatures at night is going to trigger to the rabbits. They need to go ahead and let go of their summer coat. And start transitioning to that thicker, uh, more dense winter coat. When your rabbits go into a molt, you're going to be looking at about a six week window from the time that they start the molt to the time they are completely finished and that new coat of fur has come all the way in. Some breeds it's going to take a little less time, some breeds a little more time, uh, but generally six weeks seems to be about the number that we see. So to help me talk about the molt today, we're going to use Mr. Bruno. He is our six and a half, almost six and a half year old American buck. And Bruno is, sad to say, a really hard, hard molter. So when your rabbit starts to go into a molt, what you're going to see is going to vary wildly by rabbit and how quickly your temperatures are changing. A lot of times what you're going to see first is just a little bit of hair around the cage where it's obviously starting to shed. You may start to see patches of uh, really bald, short hair. Uh, you may even see bald spots. I've had that happen a time or two. But the big thing that you're going to notice is when you run your hands over your rabbit, and you probably can't see that on camera, they're more or less going to explode. There's just going to be hair everywhere, or you're going to even get that tufts of fur starting to come out. So you're going to get this twice a year. Now, some things you can do to try and help your rabbit through a molt because um, a lot of times they're going to back off feed just a little bit uh, the first thing i like to do especially with somebody like bruno and you can kind of see he's got this little molting ruffle here on the bottom now he's been going through molt already for three or four weeks so he is most of the way through this fur in the front is actually about done you can kind of see um, now he's an older buck, so his color is not as good as it used to be, but you can kind of see I'm not getting hair off the front end, which means that we're pretty much done on the front. This is usually the last bit on a rabbit as far as where they're going to molt. Now, the, easy, the best thing to do is just to brush them out to help with the molt. I like to use one of these. It's called a uh, shedding rake. They're made for dogs and cats. This is the cat version because, of course, rabbits aren't that big. And what you do is you just go ahead and run the kind of um, perforated, kind of uh, rough edged end over it. And it'll work all the hair that's, that's molting loose. You can kind of see that coming off there. Now the reason you want to go ahead and do that if you can for a molting rabbit, and the wind is not going to help here, <laughs> is anytime you can get the hair off of the rabbit, he's not going to have to groom that hair himself. When they start grooming a lot of hair is when you start getting things like intestinal blockage. And that, of course, is really bad. The other thing you want to do while we're molting, you're going to want to go ahead and increase this guy's fiber. Now, Bruno, like I said, is a really tough molter, so he usually will go off feed a little bit. So what we do when that happens is we continue to offer him his feed pellets and his feed ration. But we go ahead and start giving him... Is about as much grass hay as he wants to eat a day. And the reason for that is the more that you can keep fiber in the gut, the more you can keep any hair that he is ingesting from packing down in his intestines. If that happens, of course, they'll cause bloat. And not only bloat, but a lot of times you'll get an impaction that can't be clear that will actually cause the life of the rabbit. Um, Americans in particular tend to be pretty heavy molters. Some of your New Zealands, uh, my Champagne the Argents are also big heavy molters. Anybody that's classified as a true fur breed um, that tends to have a, a more dense pelt will oftentimes end up with um, molt issues. Other things to keep in mind when your rabbits are molting, one, make sure absolutely they have as much water as they can get. 
especially if you've up their hay. Um, of course, hay being a dry feed, they're going to go through more water. The other thing you're going to want to do is pay pretty close attention to their cage. This is the time that you're going to get a lot of fur buildup on your cages if you're not diligent about getting it cleaned up. And what you might not consider with the fur buildup is every time you get a lot of buildup of fur, this is now a breeding ground not only for bacteria, but things like ear mites and fur mites. So if you don't want a problem down the road, make sure that you're getting those cages nice and clean. Okay, so that's the main stuff that you're going to worry about during a molt. Like I said, make sure one, lots of water, two, lots of fiber, three, go ahead and give those buns a little help with a, a brush, some grooming, whatever you want to do to make sure that you're getting that fur off to help avoid infection. And then like anything else, just keep them comfortable. In a bigger rabbit like Bruno, if you're feeding a 15 or 16% ration, you may go up to 18. The extra protein will help them uh, regrow the, not only regrow the fur, but also get any vitamins and nutrients that they might be missing as their hair coat transitions. In a smaller rabbit, it's not as much of a consideration, but if you notice that your rabbit is starting to lose weight and body condition during a molt, feel free to go ahead and step that up. If you don't want to buy a separate ration, you can get around it by adding a tablespoon of uh, calf manna to their feed at least once a day for 10 pounds of rabbit or um, you know, a teaspoon of black oil sunflower seeds, something like that that's real heavy in the protein that you can go ahead and step up. This is not a good time to add a lot of greens if they're not eating greens already. And the reason for that is that you don't want to upset a system that's already struggling with you know, other things like fur coming through the digestive system. Okay, that's it for today from Sprague Rural Homestead. If you've got questions, leave them down in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And, uh, yeah, help your buns. Don't let them molt. Don't, don't let them look like Bruno. He's got a butt skirt. <laughs> Happy homesteading.